Welcome to CFAM at Home. For today's lesson, we will be going into the great outdoors and making landscape drawings inspired by the painting Ironbound by the artist Child Hassam from our collection. For today's lesson, you will need a sheet of white drawing paper, a pair of scissors, and some crayons, pastels, or paint. But before we get started, let's take a closer look at the work of Child Hassam from our collection. Child Hassam was an American artist whose work was linked with Impressionism, a 19th century art movement which started in France, known for its focus on capturing scenes of modern life in short, quick brushstrokes. After becoming popular in Europe, American artists began working with the same ideas at the turn of the century. Child Hassam remains one of the best known American Impressionists. He used light colors to paint images of New England paying particular attention to city scenes of New York and the Maine coastline. His painting, Ironbound, seen here, shows the Mount Desert region on Ironbound Island, off the coast of Maine. With great attention to detail, Charles Hassam uses a bright palette to show a sunny day on the island. Painting en plein air, a French term meaning in the outdoors, was part of the Impressionist's practice, and the best way to catch the spontaneity of real life and study how sunlight affects the landscape at different times of day. By connecting with nature, the painter works in the moment and quickly captures what is being seen before it changes. This painting is just one of many different images Chalta Sam painted of the ironbound cliffs, all from different angles and at different times of day, as a way to become immersed in his surroundings. For today's lesson, we will be creating landscapes in plein air like the Impressionists. Choose a scenic spot outside and set up a drawing board or easel. We will be creating two drawings of the same landscape one hour apart to capture the differences caused by changing sunlight. As you create your drawing, compare them. What effects are present in one based on sunlight that are not in the other? How does this affect the colors that you use? First. Take your scissors and cut your sheet of paper into two pieces. Remember, we're going to be making two drawings one hour apart. Set your second piece aside. Make sure to record the time you start your first drawing or painting. That way you'll know enough time has passed between the first artwork and second so that you'll see significant amounts of change in the sunlight affecting your landscape. I've split the screen so you at home can see my view alongside my drawing. Take a close look at your landscape and try to analyze all the different colors and details. Try to work as accurately but as quickly as you can so that the sunlight doesn't change too much during the course of your drawing. As you select your colors, look at the layers of different shades to see how a single color can be made up of many others. For example, we usually think of shadows as gray, but shadows on grass contain shades of dark green, blue, brown, and even violet. If you think back to the work by Chal Hassan, look and see how the cliff shadows in the painting are made up of darker shades of the same yellows, pinks, blues, and whites as the cliffs that are in full sunlight. Because the sun is behind the tree, it makes the trunk look really dark brown, almost black. As you can see, there is a lake in the center of my landscape. Now normally we think of water as blue, but really the sun is casting so much light on it that it becomes white in some areas and green in others as it is reflecting back the trees on the other side of the lake. Because of the sun's placement, where the tree on the right looks really dark, 
This smaller tree on the left looks almost red in color. Take your second half of paper you set aside and draw or paint your same landscape again one hour later. What differences do you notice? As we start our second drawing, notice the sun is set so low in the sky, there are no shadows in the foreground, as compared to the first drawing. If you look closely at the lower left-hand corner, we can now see many small yellow flowers that were not visible before. The glow of the sun also casts a beautiful golden light on the moss hanging off the tree. So while moss is brown, I'm using different shades of orange and even pinks to capture the golden glow. If you're up for a weekend challenge, create several of these drawings with the same scene to look at how the sun changes the landscape over the course of a day. Thank you for joining us for Sea Family Saturday. See you next time.
Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell to find out when the next video is loaded.